Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Michaela Parlett, and I, along with my partner, Devel Amiibo, whose voice you're going to meet in a couple minutes, will be explaining to you a figure that comes from this featured article, which you've written down here, entitled, Variants of the Tata Binding Protein Can Distinguish Between Subsets of RNA Polymerase 1, 2, and 3 Promoters. This paper was published in 1992 by Cellprest, and it is found in our book, our textbook, Molecular Biology, by Robert F. Weaver, and it is figure 11.7 in that book. So in this paper, the authors had two main questions, which we'll be explaining today in this video. Uh, question one is, is Tata binding protein needed for transcription by all three RNA polymerases? And two, is Tata binding protein a, need a universal transcription factor? So if you're interested in learning a bit more about our friend TPP and the answers to these questions, please keep watching. Uh, additionally, I'd like to recognize that this video is being made for um, MCDB 427 Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. All right, so look, look at the itinerary for today. Um, so we already delivered our introduction. I'm going to give you guys some background on Tata binding protein and eukaryotic RNA polymerases. Next, we're going to go over the experimental setup of the figure that we're going to discuss. And then my heart and the bell is going to come in and interpret the figure for you. And then also give you some results and conclusions that can be drawn. If you like this video, please leave a like and watch other videos produced by University of Michigan students. So let's get into Tata binding protein. So the Tata box, which is a conserved ele um, element that's found in eukaryotic promoters, is detailed here in the schematic and is located 25 base pairs upstream of the plus one side that I've drawn here. So we can say that this part is negative 25 in reference to the transcription start site. And the Tata box has a conserved sequence that I'll draw right here, 5 prime to 3 prime, T A T A A A. And this is the binding site for Tata binding protein. So Tata binding protein is a transcription factor that, with the help of other transcription factors, facilitates the binding of RNA polymerase to initiate transcription. So in this more complicated schematic, we should show below how Tata binding protein works with other factors to initiate transcription. So it's important to recognize that in eukaryotes, there are three different RNA polymerases. RNA polymerase 1 starts transcription of most rRNA promoters, so that would be your 5.8S, 18S, and 28S rRNAs. And rRNA promoters have no Tata box, as we detailed here in the schematic. RNA polymerase 2 starts transcription at mRNA promoters, and RNA polymerase 2 can also make miRNA precursors and most small nuclear rRNAs. mRNA promoters have a Tata box, as detailed in the schematic. And then finally, RNA polymerase 3 starts transcription at tRNA and 5S rRNA promoters, and tRNA and 5S RNA promoters have no Tata box, which we detailed here. So it's important to recognize that at the time of this paper, um, back in the early 90s, they didn't know whether or not Tata binding protein was found in complexes required for transcription by the different polymerases. Since different polymerases um, initiate transcription for certain promoters that don't have a Tata box. And what we're going to discuss in this figure is one of the first experiments that show that Tata binding protein is actually used by all three polymerases. So let's go over the experimental setup. So if you remember the title of the paper, it was Variants of the Tata binding protein can distinguish subsets of RNA polymerase 1, 2, and 3 promoters. So by variants, they actually made mutations in Tata binding protein. So in schematic A, we can see that at amino and acid position 65, there was a change from proline to serine. And also, at amino acid position 143, there's a change from isoleucine to asparagine. So we actually have two different mutations that the authors made. The authors also note that these mutations were um, temperature sensitive. So what does that mean? What they did was they streaked independently in different plates at different temperatures um, while type in mutant cells. So 25 degrees Celsius, which is the permissible temperature, we can see that all cell types, the wild type and the mutants, grew well. However, in the 37 degree condition, we can see that the mutants, the P65 and the I143 mutants, these did not grow as well. Thus, we can conclude from this figure that the mutants are temperature sensitive. So with that experimental setup explained, I'm going to give it over to my partner, Debelle, and she's going to explain the figure and show you what results can be made. Okay, guys, before we go into the figure, let's talk about the goals for this experiment. This experiment was carried out to assess the effects of mutation in TBP, which is a Tata binding protein, and how those mutations affect transcription by all three different RNA polymerases 1, 2, and 3. And we'll come to see that TBP is actually needed for transcription with all three different RNA polymerases. So to get into how we got these conclusions, 
the researchers carried out an in vitro transcription reaction to assess the transcription levels of all three different RNA polymerases. Therefore, four different uh, in vitro transcription reactions were carried out with RNA polymerase 1, which transcribes yeast RDNA, which has no tata box, RNA polymerase 2, which transcribes yeast CYC1 promoter, which has a tata box, and RNA polymerase 3, which transcribes the yeast 5S ribosomal RNA promoter and the yeast tRNA leucine 3 promoters, which have no tata boxes. These transcription reactions were then assayed by S1 mapping, giving us figure 11.7 from our textbook, the Molecular Biology textbook by Robert Weaver, shown here. Now let's look at the different lanes. Lanes 1 and 2 show transcription with wild type cells at 24 degrees and 37 degrees. Lanes 3 and 4 show transcription with isolates into asparagine mutant cells at 24 degrees and 37 degrees. And lanes 5 and 6 show transcription with proline to serine mutant cells also at 24 degrees and 37 degrees. Okay, let's see the detailed figure and go into this properly. Now, looking at lanes 1 and 2 alone, we can see that shifting wild type cells grown at 24 degrees to 37 degrees did not affect transcription by any of the three different RNA polymerases. However, for lanes 3 and 4, there is, an, there is no in vitro transcription reactions for any of the promoters using extract from isolation to asparagine mutant TBPs, either at 24 degrees or 37 degrees. This shows that even if the cells grow at 24 degrees, as indicated by my partner previously, in vitro transcription reaction did not occur at any temperature. Therefore, since this mutant is severely defective in transcription by all three different RNA polymerases, the isolation amino acid is important for TBP function, and TBP is also required for transcription with all three different RNA polymerases 1, 2, and 3, since there was no transcription. Now, let's erase this so we can further look into the last thing. Lanes 5 and 6, which shows the proline to serine mutants, looking at only RNA polymerase 1, we see that there is no severe defect in transcription either at 24 degrees or when the cells were shifted to 37 degrees. However, there was approximately a twofold decrease in transcription after this shift, but there is still transcription occurring, so there was no severe defect in transcription for these mutants. However, for lanes, lanes 5 and 6 for polymerase 2 and 3, we can see that there is no in vitro transcription occurring in these mutant cells, either at 24 degrees or 37 degrees, just as a similar rate of transcription for the isolation to asparagine mutants indicated here. With this, we can say that this mutant was severely defective in transcription with RNA polymerase 2 and 3, but not RNA polymerase 1. So TBP is used differently for polymerase transcription for polymerase 1 versus polymerases 2 and 3. Okay, now let's go into the conclusions for this experiment. Okay, with the data I just showed you right now and all the previous figures my partner has gone over, we can make two conclusions. One, that TBP is required for transcription with all three different RNA polymerases despite the presence or the absence of a TADA box, which makes this a universal transcription factor. And two, that TBP functions differently for transcription with RNA polymerase 1 versus RNA polymerases 2 and 3. And this was shown by the on the figure in lanes 5 and 6 here. Okay, with that, I would like you guys to check out the S1 mapping experiment if you don't understand how this works. And if you want to understand how the researchers did this experiment, you could go check out the paper my partner presented in the introduction by Schultz, Reader, and Han. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope you understood everything we said and enjoyed this video. And with that, go blue.
Go blue.